Okay, so let's start. So good afternoon, everybody. So last time, first for tomorrow, as you know, we have a lab and a quiz tomorrow. They are gonna be about logic operation and shift and to rotate. Is that okay? Uh, lab and the quiz, okay? Today, I, last time I started to teach what we call a stack. Okay, so this is the way I define the stack. A stack is a part of the memory, okay? As you see here, it's a part of the memory that is reserved for a special purpose. So I'm gonna take a part. Until now, what we did so far, I divided the memory between data and between the code. That's what we did so far, okay? So, for, so, so what we did so far, starting from 1000, because this is the RAM area, Starting from 1000, I'm going to write my data from here. Again, what I mean by data uh, is, uh, I mean uh, variables, arrays, everything you should start from 1000. That's what we have been doing so far. Also, our code is going to start from uh, 4000, okay? Um, as you see here. Uh, today, we are going to also add a stack because now, after I teach stack, now the memory is shared. The memory is shared between uh, or shared among uh, stack, code, and data. So there are three things that should be in the memory. So it's again, so I'm going to take a part of the memory. I'm going to call it stack. Is that okay? So that means, without even explaining more, that means stack is used to store data, right? Yeah, because stack is a part of the memory. And the only thing memory is doing just to store data. Yes, so stack is used to store data. Okay, but Give us more details, how it is different. Yes, it is different. I'm gonna tell you how. So what we did so what we did so far, guys. So now how can you read or write loc uh, in locations in memory? How can you read or write? Until until now, all what we did, we call it random access. That's, that's what we have done so far. You remember, you can say load location 1000, then uh, load location 1005. So there is no specific. There is no specific order or sequence to read memory. There is nothing like that. That's why we call it random. So random means that's what we have been doing so far. Random means I can I can randomly read any location. There is no specific order. There is no specific sequence. Is that okay? That's why that's what we have been doing using load and the store. You can read. You can write to any random location. I didn't tell you in order to read one thousand five. You have to read 1004, 1003, there is no order, random. Is that okay? Now, a stack is different. A stack is a part of the memory, but I cannot read it randomly. I cannot read any location. No, you can. There is a specific order. There is a specific sequence if you want to read anything. So exactly what you are seeing here is stack. In stack, the lot. The, uh, the last data in is actually the first data output. So the, the last information or the last data you write to the stack is actually the first one you will get from the stack. Is that okay? Okay, so last data you write to the stack is actually the first data you read to the stack. So conclusion, before we continue, very simple. A stack is a part, I'm gonna take a part of the memory, I'm gonna use it as a stack. What, so what you mean by as a stack? It means, the way I'm going to read or write is going to be different from what we did before. How it is different because in a stack, last in, first output. You got what I'm saying? So if you tell me the stack, stack, give me data. So stack is going to give you the last data you wrote. Okay. Again, that's how it works. The question will be, okay, so why, how, how this is useful? Why is he made it this way? For sure, I'm going to answer this question, but let's, let's see first. Uh, let's first understand uh, how it works first. Okay, then I'm gonna tell you it's very useful, very very useful. We cannot live without stack. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why. So exactly what's happening now, guys, is what we are gonna do is we are gonna start our data from location one thousand and then we go this way. Okay, we are gonna write our code from four thousand and then we are gonna go this way. And the stack actually is gonna grow this way. This is, this is, so now, now I have, we have an space. 
So maybe the stack is gonna, I'm gonna use, for example, some space here for stack, some space here for data, and the code will be here. Yes, so again, and as I told you, so there is an observation here. The stack is gonna grow, the stack, the stack is gonna grow from the high address to the low address. That's right, as you see here. So for example, so when the stack is gonna grow, so I'm gonna go to lower address, yes. Okay, this is how it is, okay. I'm gonna tell you how we make it this way, okay. But I wanna tell you something very important, okay. This is a very simple, my microcontroller is a very simple device. We don't have, a, we don't have like an operating system to manage, to manage the memory for you. You have to manage the memory by yourself. What, what you mean? I mean, I mean, uh, this is machine. The machine doesn't understand whatever you are gonna tell the machine to do. The machine is gonna do. Okay. So what I mean, if I if if I add add too much to the stack. If I add too much to the stack, maybe you are gonna overwrite your data. And in this time, your program is gonna crash. You got what I'm saying? So you have to make sure, you have to make sure there is no, you should have enough space here. Uh, there, uh, no, no. Same thing if you write too much data. So if you write too much data, maybe you are gonna go to the stack. Again, again, no one is gonna tell you error. This is the stack error. No, it's a very low level programming. You are gonna take the machine. Right in this location is gonna write in this location, even if the stack already used to this location. This is a low level, okay? So you have to make sure uh, you have enough space for data and enough space for a stack, and there is no overlap between them. Otherwise, if there is overlap, your program is gonna crash, right? So anyway, and I think for most of our programs, uh, it should be okay for most of our programs. Um, so if you start from 4,000 and you go up, Okay, and here if we start from 1,000, you go there, so it should be it should be okay. Any questions? Okay, let me give you more details about it. Again, a stack is a memory, but the way you are gonna read or write is different. Last the inference out. This is actually this idea is similar to the idea of uh, if you have a stack of plates. So let me show you a picture here to understand Peter what I want to say. So for example, here I put here a picture. Here, guys, if you have a if you have a stack a stack of plates, so if you, you can imagine every plate like one information, one data, right? So if you want to do it, I have to put I have to put put this plate first, and then this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. So the last plate I put is actually the first one I'm going to take because you are you have to take you have to take from here, right? So the, the, this plate is the last one you took, you put you put it here, right? It's gonna be the first one you will take. It's exactly the same idea. We are gonna do something like that, okay? So, so how? Okay, as as I explained to before, memory is just locations, and every location is to abide. Yes, this is how the memory is. So how can we implement this idea? How can we implement this idea that if you wanna write, you have to write. If you want to add a plate, you have to add here. If you want to take a plate, you have to take from here. You cannot take from here. How can we implement this idea using memory? Because or memory is just a location. Every location will store a byte. Is that right? So how we can implement this idea? In order to implement this idea, they have a special register. I told you before in the very beginning, I told you stack pointer. So this register is called a stack pointer. Is that okay? So this, this special register is used in order to implement the idea. I'm gonna tell you how. Okay. So what I told you guys, we have a special register. This register, we call it a stack pointer. And this register is actually 16 bits. The reason this register is 16 bit because this register is actually is gonna store an address. So this one is gonna storing, storing an address. So when it is store an address, that means this will be a pointer like PC. 
Same thing for PC. PC is the register that's storing an address. Pointing like register X when we when we read or as we did in the last lab, when we read a memory location, I have to use the register X as, as a pointer to point on a location so that I can read. That's true because this one is storing an address. A stack pointer is actually uh, is actually a pointer. So, okay, so a stack pointer should hold an address, very important address. Okay. Uh, why why it's a very important address because this address we call we call it actually the top the top of the stack is that okay that means this is that means this is the top of the stack okay that means if i want to write you have to write on the top if you want to read you have to read from the top okay similar to the idea of the plates if you have plates right so i have to know where is what is the address of the last plate where is the address? Stack pointer is going to tell you, right? So, uh, so stack pointer, so stack pointer is going to be used to tell me, tell me where is the last information or last data you input. So that if you want to read, I'm going to read from here. If you want to write, I'm going to write there. That's what we call it top of the stack. Okay. I just again, I want to elaborate here to understand it better. So, for example, here this is uh, um, this is like an an, an uh, this is like a stack we have here in, in the very beginning. Okay, so here this is like a stack, guys. We have here a byte, 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 byte. Is that okay? A stack pointer is pointing here on the top. Is that okay? So think about it. If I take the stack, please stack. Give me a byte. So the stack is gonna give you, it's gonna ask you CSP. Look how it works, okay? Okay, let, let me, I think, because, let me hear and then I'm gonna explain to you, okay? So how I can read a byte from the stack? And by the way, when if you wanna read a byte from the stack, I'm not gonna use the word read anymore. Usually the, the term we are using is pull, when you pull from the stack. So when you read from the stack, we don't, we don't say read. Yes, you are reading, okay? But we don't use the word read. We're using the word you pull. When you write to the stack, we don't use the word write, but we are using the word uh, push. Okay, guys, so now we have two, two new words, push and pull. Push means I'm gonna write to the stack. I'm gonna put a plate, right? Uh, pull means I'm gonna read from the stack. That's okay. So let's see, let's see how, if I have a stack, okay. So now how I can pull or how I can read the byte from the stack. As I told you guys, look at this picture here or look at this slide. Number one, always stack pointer should point at the top of the stack. So this is the last blade. So this is the last data you, you input. So now once you tell me pull stack, please stack pull. What the stack is gonna do is stack is gonna ask SP. Where are your SP? I am here. So I'm gonna read, for example, 1005. So 1005 is stored in SP. So I'm gonna read the byte at the location pointed by SP, which is 3A. So this is the blade. This is the information I'm gonna give you. And this is the last information you input. And then I have to update the stack because once I take one blade off, I should have a new top now, a new top. So what I did here, guys, now I'm gonna update the stack. How you are gonna update the stack? So I have to add one, add one, remember, Every time you, you decrement the address, the stack is growing. Okay, this is, if you, I go back here. Yeah, if I go back here, guys. So every time you reduce the address, it's growing. Every time you increment the address, you actually shrinking. Okay, so, so let me explain again. So what, this slide is very important. This is how, how you pull. Again, look here, guys. Assume this is the stack is here. I have a byte, 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 and SP is here, SCP is here. I'm gonna take the stack, pull, pull a byte stack, please. So what stack is gonna, is gonna do, is gonna ask SP, where are you SP? I'm here. So SP, SP is storing this address. So I'm gonna take whatever is there, I'm gonna give it to you. And then now SP is here. I have to update it to here, because this is now is the new top for me. Is that okay? I am gonna ask the stack, I wanna pull again. SP is here. So it's gonna give me this one. Then it has to add one. So every time when it's shrinking, you have to add. When it is growing, you have to subtract, right? This is how our stack is working. So now SP is here. Is that okay, guys? Now I want to write. Okay. Uh, or let's continue if I want to read. If I want to read again, if I want to read again, I'm going to ask a stack. Please, stack, give me. 
I want to pull. I want to pull a pipe. So what Stack is going to do is he is here. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read a pipe from the address, from the location pointed by SP. Okay, this is number one. Number two, add one to SP. So every time you read or you read or write, okay, you actually SP has to be updated, right? Automatically, you don't need to do anything. That's how it works, right? Now, this is how I can read. Now, how can you write? Okay, it's the same idea. So number one, if I want to write a byte, Number one, I have I have to change a speed to point to a new empty location, empty location. Then I'm gonna write the byte at this location. Okay, can you explain it again? Okay, I can, I'm gonna do it. Okay, go. Assuming this is a stack, assuming this is a stack, SP is here. I wanna write a byte. Okay, so what number one, I have I have to uh, I have to decrement one. So that SP is gonna is gonna point at an uh, empty location. Then I'm going to write this pipe at this location. Yes, I'm done. You got it? Any questions? So again, let me say it again, as you see here, guys. Every time you want to write to the stack, again, I, I'm not going to use the word write again. I, I'm going to use the word to push. Push means you write to the stack, OK? So every time you want to push a byte to the stack, what's going to happen is stack pointer is here. That means this is the last information you input, the last data you input, and now, you are going to input a new one, so it has to be at the top. Every time you input, you have to input on the top. Every time you read, you have to read from the top. Okay. So anyway, so number one is stack pointer is decremented by one, as you see here. And then I'm going to write this byte at the location pointed by the stack pointer. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, I want to tell you something important. So now, now you should understand what is a stack. A stack is a part of the memory. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it so that last in first out. So the way I'm gonna read or write different from what we did before, last in first out. And in order to implement this idea, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a pointer. It's, it's, it's P. So SP is only dedicated for this for this functionality. SP like PC. PC is different from X. We can use X in our programming, but PC it has a de dedicated function. Same thing for stack pointer. Okay, stack pointer has a dedicated function. Okay. One more thing I want to say, guys, as I'm going to explain right now, we have instructions to push and to pull. Is that okay? You don't, here I'm explaining, you don't need to do these two operations. You don't need to do this operation. I'm explaining how the push instruction is going to work. So all what you have to do, just to push. I'm explaining what this instruction is going to do, right? So you don't need to do, you don't need to do the protection by yourself. No, this is going to be done by the instruction itself. Is that okay? Any questions? Okay. One more thing, guys. Now I, I give you in these two examples, I'm, I'm explaining how can you push a byte? How can you how can you pull a byte? Question is, can I push a word? Can, can I pull a word? The answer is yes. We have an instruction to push by byte or a word. Pull a byte or a word, okay, guys. By common sense, how this would be would be different between two. All what you have to do, you have to subtract it by two instead of by one. Is that okay? So, for example, here, if I want to write a word, what's gonna happen? Because I need to location. SP is here. SP is here, right? So now I have to subtract to two because I, I need two location, and then I'm gonna write a word at the new location pointed by SP. Make sense? Same thing, if I want to read, if I want to pull. So what, what I'm going to do, ask SP, what is it? SP? I'm here. So I'm going to read the word. I'm going to read the word from this location here. Then I'm going to add two. So every time, so everything is the same, similar to what I explained here, guys. The only difference is that you are going to subtract two. Also, you are going to write two bytes. Here, you are going to add two. Here, you are going to, you are going to, uh, you are going to read, read two, two bytes, and then you are going to add two here. Okay, any questions? Okay. Again, I'm gonna say it again because I, I what I'm saying, guys, you don't need to do this operation by yourself. You don't need to do two operations. I'm saying what I'm saying. We already have an instruction for pull. Pull is gonna do that. So pull itself is gonna read and then give you the value and then it's gonna update SP. So you can see SP always updated. Is that okay? So now tell me what instruction we have right now for, for a stack, okay? 
We have here for push instruction, we have push register A. So this one is gonna push a byte at the top of the stack. This one is gonna push B, push C. C is actually the C CCR, the flag register. We have push register D, push register X, push register Y. So we have three instruction words to push words. We have three instruction to push bytes. Is that okay? So here actually when you push A, you actually are gonna store the value of A. You copy, you copy the value of A to the top of the stack. So this instruction, all this instruction, I'm not gonna change A or B or C or D or X or Y. You just copy, it's you copy. You copy A to the stack, you copy B to the stack and so on. Is that okay? One more thing, pull, pull in instruction. Again, pull instruction means I wanna read the byte from the top of the stack, okay? So here, this one, we have pull A. So this one, you are gonna read a byte from the top of the stack, store it in A. This one is gonna read a byte from the top of the stack, store it in P, store it in C. Here, you are gonna read the word from the top of the stack, store it in D, in X, in Y, okay? So everything here will change because you are here, you are gonna write two. You are gonna write to A, B, and so on. Any questions? Okay, guys. Okay, so let's have more examples. Uh, let's have some examples here to understand uh, this this part. For example, I wanna push A. When I say, for example, push A, I told you push A means I wanna copy the value of register A. I wanna copy it uh, and to store it at the top of the stack. Okay, so so after after for example, if register A is storing three A, if if this byte is stored in register A. After you execute this, this instruction, if you go to the stack, you are going to find this, this value is stored there. So it's going to copy. So this one is going to copy whatever here is going to put it in the top of the stack. And SP is going to now, this, this value is at the top. Okay. So the last in, the last in is actually the first one you are going to read. For sure, still, you should be still curious. Now I'm focusing on. Definition: What is it? How it works? But still, you, you should be curious. How 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 I need something like last in first out? Why I need something like that? For sure, I can explain why. Okay. Again, we cannot live without stacks. You know why? As I'm gonna explain right now, because without these stacks, we cannot do subroutines. We we cannot implement subroutines are not gonna work without the stack. I'm gonna explain to you why. Okay. You know. Um. Same thing, you guys. Another example, if you have something like that, if you have something like that, if this is a stack, okay? For example, this one is pointing at whatever. Uh, here I'm using 1005, whatever, any, just a random number. But anyway, you are gonna start, as I told you, you are gonna start from 4,000, okay? Um, and then when I say pull A, when I say pull A, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna take whatever at the, at the top of the stack, I'm gonna put it in register A. So after you execute, Use this instruction. If you see what is in A, you will find this if 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 is origin A. Also, you can you will see the stack pointer is incremented by one. Stack pointer now is one thousand six. Is that okay, guys? Any questions? Okay. Someone should ask me something is wrong here. What is what's wrong? Look here, guys. What we are gonna do is that I told you we write we write the code starting from four thousand. Is that right? Also. Initially, the stack pointer should equal 4,000 as well. Initially, in the very beginning, in your program, you have to say stack pointer, your initial value is 4,000. So please tell me, the, the byte 4,000, is that this byte belongs to the code or belongs to the stack? Tell me. You answer that, that's what I'm saying? So I'm gonna start writing the code from 4,000. Stack pointer should start from 4,000. Is that okay? And now the stack is empty. Nothing in the stack, stack is empty. I didn't write anything yet. Is that okay? The answer is, when I say stack pointer, is start from 4,000, when I, when I initialize, when I say stack pointer is equal 4,000, this is actually should be, this is not the beginning of the stack by the way. Why? Because as I told you, if you wanna write, if stack pointer is, if you wanna write, you actually increment and then you write. 
increase, uh, sorry, decrement, I'm sorry, decrement, and then you write. You got what I'm saying? So when I say, stack, I'm going to say stack point at 4,000. It doesn't mean the first byte of the stack is going to be stored at, at 4,000. It doesn't mean that because you decrement and then you add. So the real beginning is actually should be 4,000 minus one. You got what I'm saying? So when I say, I say stack pointer is 4,000, and then you push, when you push, SP uh, uh, decremented, and then you write. So it has to be one more. So actually, you got what I'm saying? That's why there is no confusion. Actually, the location 4,000 should be good, good. But the stack pointer is going to be here because when I say 4,000, the beginning will be the one, bef uh, the one before this one. By the way, <laughs> I know it's a little bit funny. 4,000 minus one is not equal to 399 because this is not, this is not uh, money or this is not uh, tomatoes, okay? But this is not decimal. This is not decimal. This is six decimal. You get what I'm saying? This, this is not the beginning. The beginning, I think, should be 3FFF, right? So, so what, what should be before 4,000 should, should be the address 3FF. Make sense? Because this is six decimal, right? So actually, when I say stack pointer at 4,000, so, so actually, uh, this is the initial value. So the first byte is going to be stored at 3 f which is this byte. Make sense? Any questions? OK. So before I, before I say how stack is useful, how it is important, maybe I, maybe I, win, I want to give you more examples uh, just to understand it more before before I explain how it is useful. Okay, guys. So as you see here, guys, for example, I, I, have, I have an example here. Look here what I want to do. I'm going to say, for example, load stack pointer 1006. Again, I told you in the lab, I'm going to make it 4,000. It's a lab, but this, this is just, I'm going to say, I'm going to say some random numbers here, okay? So for example, I'm going to say stack pointer at 1006. So actually, so what this instruction is going to do, what is in the session is going to do something like that, okay? A stack pointer is pointing. This is, a, and we have used load, load stack pointer. So you, you have, we have to use this one, guys, to initialize the stack pointer. This is the initial value only one time at the beginning of your program to initialize the stack pointer. So this is the initial value for the stack pointer. Okay, anyway, uh, so here I'm going to say stack pointer is pointing at the location 1006. This is the initial value, okay? Then I'm going to say, for example, Store 20 in register A, then push A. What's going to happen if you do that? What's going to happen? As you see here, guys, the stack pointer should be decremented by one, decremented by one, and then we have 20. So, so now the stack has one, one value. Here the stack was empty. Here the stack was empty. Now the stack has one, one value. Is that okay? okay. Then I'm going to say load register B 28 and then push B. Okay. So every time you do that, every time you push, a stack pointer, a stack pointer is decremented by one. If you push a byte decremented by one, and then you are gonna write the new value. So in the beginning, this was the top of the stack. The top of the stack was number 20. Now, after you push another value here, the top of the stack now is 28. You got it? Plate. You can think about it, another plate. I put one plate and this is another plate. Now, now I want to push a word, as you see here. So I'm going to say load x with, with this number, push x. So again, this was, a st a stack was here. Before I do this push, the stack was here. So the stack should be decremented by two. So this is like one billet, one billet, and then now this is like a big billet, okay? It's going to take two locations. So the SP is going to be decremented by two, and then I'm going to, I'm going to store, again, guys, this is done by, you don't need to worry about the stack point, but you don't need to worry about it. This is done by the push and the bullet instruction automatically, okay? So you see now, guys, you see as now that now as the more you push, the stack, the stack is growing. If you push, 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 push. So now the stack growing, right? Every time you pull, 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 so actually the stack is shrinking. You got, you got what I'm saying? So every time you pull, you can make it smaller. Every time you push, you are going to make it grow or make it bigger. Okay. Um, now, in the assignment, so let me ask you a question because this is already in the assignment. I give you this question in the assignment. I told you guys, 
uh, your your data should start from 1000 and then you have to go this way i told you your stack is going to start from 4000 and you have to go this way but you have to make sure they are not going to overwrite each other otherwise other right your program is going to crash i cannot use the same physical location twice you cannot do that right so anyway so you have to make sure of that so let me ask you a question and i think this is a question in uh, in the assignment how much space i need for a stack how much space okay the tricky part is in a stack is dynamic the size of the stack is dynamic dynamic the size is dynamic variable it's varying it's changing right why every time i push okay so i'm gonna be big space if you pull decrease push Pull, pull, look dynamic. Every time you push, you make it bigger. Every time you, you pull, you, you decrease it, okay? So for example, here, you push one value, you push two values, you push a third value, and then you, you, you pull this value. So you have to see in your program, you, you have to check your program. That's what, this, this is a question of assignment. You have to check your program and see how much data or how, how much data you put in the sec at a certain moment, at a certain moment. And this should be, you have to reserve this, this area for, for the step. So as, for example, guys, if you have this program, push, push. Now after two push, two. so now the stack is two. Then you push three times, so now the stack is three, right? And then you pull, okay? So now, and then uh, then you pull, and maybe that's, that's, that's it, that's, for example, that's it. So this is the case. So how much space I have to see the stack? You have to see what was the maximum amount of data we're in the stack at this moment was three. That was not same. Again, because it's dynamic, it's changing. So we have to see in your program what was the maximum amount of data you stored at a certain moment in the stack. Every time you push, you grow. Every time you pull, you shrink. Right? Anyway, any questions? So in this question, in the assignment, all what you have to do, guys, look at the program. See, see at a certain moment what was the Maximum amount of data is stored in the stack. Okay. Any questions? Now, so again, guys, again, what I did so far is the following, guys. Number one, I explained the idea of a stack. It's a memory location, or, or sorry, it's a part of the memory. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use it differently from what we did before. Okay, differently. You can even feel it is differently. You know why? How, how you can you feel it is differently? I'm going to tell you. What you did before, I had to say load register A, location 1000. You, even you have to tell me which location, right? That's what we did before. So, what we did before, every time you want to read or write, you have to tell me which location. With this stack, you don't need to tell me which location. You just have to say pull, pull A or push A. That's it, right? You don't need to tell me which location I have to read, right? Because what we did before was random access. I can read any place. Now, it's a, you. If you want to read, you have to read uh, the one at the top. That's why you didn't need to give me address. You didn't. You don't. You don't need to tell me. I want to read this one. No, just you tell me. Ball. Ball means read. Or bush. Bush means write. That's it. That's all what you need to tell me. Okay. That's it. Because it's not random access. You can feel the difference. Okay. Now. Anyway. So now I want to come to, uh, uh, hopefully you were able to understand how it works. That's what I need from you right now. I want you to understand the idea of last interest output because this is a key point of the main, the main concept here. It's a memory, but last, like play. The last plate you are going to put, this is the first one you are going to get. And until now, I, I, now I'm going to explain why we need it and why you are telling us it's very important. And without, without the steps, we cannot do, we cannot, we cannot make subroutines. Do this is simply because subroutine needs something like last in first out. That's it. In order to implement subroutines, they need something like last in first out. I'm gonna tell you one. Okay. So now let's see how, how stack is used. Number one, you can use a stack, you can use a stack, guys, like a temporary storage of data. And I already explained to this one before. You remember in the last lab. I told you register Y is a pointer. I told you that in the last step. Register Y is a pointer. And I so I, I want to use Y for multiplications. But still, I don't want to lose the value stored in Y. 
So swing the last lap, I told you it's okay for this lap, I store it somewhere and then use Y and then get it, get it back. That's what we did, right? But again, the, uh, now we are gonna do it in a professional way on, on, or in the right way, or the easy way. The easy way is, okay, put it in the stack, use, use Y, get it back from the stack. Much better than what you did before. You know why? What you did before, you have to memorize which memory location. Or you have, for example, I'm gonna put it in a certain memory location, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna get it from a certain memory location. And maybe it was easy, easy in the lab because it's only one, one, one word. In reality, what if you have like too many? If you wanna store too many and you wanna get too many, it's gonna be too difficult to create too many variables to hold all of that. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so it's easy. Anything you wanna, uh, in a situation like that, usually stack is the best solution. Just to put the value in the stack, use Y, get it back from the stack. So this is the first thing here, and that's how we are gonna use it. Look, guys, here. For, I'm giving you an example. Uh, similar, this is similar to what we did in the lab. For example, here, I wanna create a loop, guys. So forget, forget this part for now. I wanna create a loop as we did before. So here, in order to create a loop, I'm gonna use decrement and branch if not equal. And then I'm gonna initial, e, e is a counter. E is a counter as I explained to before, right? So here, A, the value of A, A will start with, I start, A starts with, with 10, and then A is nine, eight, and so on, okay? Once, as long as A is not zero, you are gonna go back. Not zero, go back. Once it is zero, I'm gonna come. Is that okay? So A is a counter, okay? So now I'm gonna have a problem. The problem I'm gonna have here is, I wanna use A to do something. Okay, I want to I want to use register E for multiplication. Okay, but but you should not you should not you should not miss miss up miss up with with the, with the stored value in E. Okay, so because I need it, I need this value because this is a count. I need it. You should not overwrite it. I told you one student forget to do that, and in, it ended up to have like an infinite loop. <laughs> you got to say I want to loop ten times. It ended up infinite loop. Why? Because it should be if you want to make. Uh, 10, 10 iteration, it has to work this way. 10, 9, 8, 7, until it is zero, right? It has to work this way. What happens, the student, because using A for multiplication, I'm gonna start A with, with 10, and then A got a random number after you did multiplication. So now A is 20. The next iteration, A is 50. A is the, so, uh, so it's not, it's not gonna have this counting. So that's why it in the doubles infinite loop, okay? So anyway. So okay now so what how I can how I can deal with this problem guys here very simple. This is the same problem you have in the last lab as well, but it's uh, for register it's the same thing. But the other one I think was for register Y. So all what you have to do guys I have to store register A somewhere. So I have to store the count somewhere, and then I'm gonna use A, and then before I come to this one I have to get it back. And again the best way to do it just to push and pull. You got what I'm saying? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna say here, push A, use A, pull A. You got what I'm saying? Push A, use A, pull A. You got what I'm saying? This, is, this can be valid for any other register. Okay, guys? So you just save, you store the value in the stack, and then use it, and then you can get it back from this. This is much better than what you did in the last step. Because I didn't, I don't need to reserve like a memory location. I need to temporary memory location. I forget it. No, just put it in the stack. Just use it. Get it back from the stack. That's it. Any questions? Okay. One more thing I want to tell you here, guys. Just an observation. If you look, look what I'm gonna do right now, and to try to think about it. If I push A, push B, then pull A, pull B, it's the same order. So here I push A, pull B, uh, sorry, push A, push B, pull A, pull B, it's the same order. So here A, B, here A, B. You know what I did? <laughs> it's the same order, but actually I did this way. Why you did this way? Because when I, the last value was B, I'm gonna put it in A. <laughs> you got that saying? So last value in is the first one out. So if you do, if it is the same order, if it is the same order, actually I'm gonna do swap, swap, okay? 
if it is in the opposite orders, for example, and that's exactly what I'm, I'm gonna do right here. For example, if I say push A, push B, and then I'm gonna to say here, pull A, pull, sorry, pull B, pull A, opposite order. So here A, B, here B, A, opposite order. Okay, so now if it is opposite order, so the last week, so A, B, and then I'm gonna go here, B, A. If you do this one, no change, no change. So if A is 20, uh, B is 30, after you do that, they are gonna give, they are gonna take the initial values. Makes sense, right? Again, because this one is last interest album. So this is last, this last, first. And then last, first. That's why I'm saying here, and by the way, you are gonna do it all the time. Look, look what I'm gonna do here. Look here, guys. I can say push register A, push register D, push X, push Y, okay? So here actually I'm storing is the initial values. So I'm storing these values in the, in the stack. And then I can, I can overwrite A, B, X, Y. I can change them. Then if I wanna, if I wanna return the original value back, I have, I have to return the other way. So if you push this way, you have to pull this way. So that the gang gets, if every register is gonna get its initial value. So here, look here. Push Y is the last one, uh, uh, last one is the first one. Push X, pull X, and so on. You got what I'm saying? So if you do it, if you push, if you push this way and you pull this way, so every register is gonna take its initial value. Okay, guys, why this is, why this is important, something like that, and we're gonna do all the time, by the way, something like that. I'm gonna say very, very important. I'm gonna tell you how, look here. I did not teach, I, I did not teach uh, subroutines yet. I'm gonna teach you subroutines uh, sh shortly, but we're gonna do something like that in subroutines. Look here, guys. We're gonna do something like that all the time in subroutines. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna do something like that in subroutines. I'm gonna tell you why. For example, guys, look here, guys. If this is the main program and you have here register A, B, X, and Y, this is the registers we have. Now you are gonna call a subroutine. I'm gonna teach subroutines right now, okay? When you call a subroutine, actually I'm gonna go execute the subroutine and then come back. Is that okay, guys? What is the problem can may happen? I'm gonna tell you the problem what may happen. A, register A has some value, B has some value, X has some value, and Y has some value. I wanna use the same value here after call. Okay, so A is storing a number, B number, X and Y. So the, this is just are storing some numbers. And I want them to have the same numbers after I call. Okay, okay, right? That means your subroutine should not mess up with them. So the way you are gonna, usually we are gonna do it guys, once we, every time you write a subroutine, in the very beginning, the registers, the registers you are gonna use, the register you are gonna use in the subroutine, I'm gonna push the original, original values. Then I use the register and then I'm gonna pull the original value back. So that before you call or after you call, the register are gonna have the same values. So I'm not gonna mess up with your, the subroutine is not gonna mess up with, with the main program. Okay guys, so always we are gonna do, this is a very good programming habit. So always we are gonna do something like that as I'm gonna explain uh, later. So for any subroutine guys, in any subroutine, we put here some push instruction and then at the end we put here pull instruction. So that, and for we do that for every register you are gonna use here in the, in the subroutine. Okay, so that in the main program, the values of the register here are gonna be the same thing after the subroutine. For example, if X is a pointer, if X, you are using X as a pointer, okay? So, so you are expecting the same value for X, it should be the same value here because you are gonna use the, you are gonna use the pointer later in your program. So are you gonna use it here in your program? Okay, so I don't notice the subroutine to, to change this value. Okay, otherwise my program is not gonna work. So I don't want, I want as a subroutine to do its function, functionality, okay, without missing up, missing up with, 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 with the main program. 
you got the idea. So that's why all the time when I explain subroutines, all the time we're gonna do something like that. Any register you wanna use the subroutine, you have to push all of them and then you have to pull all of them. Is that okay? Maybe some of some of you are confused between in, in C language, we have something we call it local variable and the global variable, right? So global you can use anywhere, right? Uh, local, it's only local, okay? Here, here everything is everything is global because it's a hardware. Register X is a hardware. So register X in the main is the same register X if you put any function because it's hardware, you better say. But that doesn't mean you cannot create what we call a local variable. Still, you can create it. And the way they do it, they do it using the step. When you go to a subroutine or something like that, you can use a step to create some local variables. But this is another topic. But I just, I, I maybe some of you are confused. Okay, we have a register in the main program. But when I go to a subroutine, it should be a different register A. No, this is a physical, this is a physical one hardware, right? So it's the same, it's the same register. That's why if, if you change the register A here, it's gonna change here. Okay. Anyway, so I'm gonna this is um we're gonna do this part all the time for sure, guys. This is much easier than using than uh, as you much easier than what we did in the last step. So I don't need to reserve the memory location, just any data you want to save. Give them the stack when you need them, get them from the stack. But you have to be smart and you have to be careful. Why you have to be careful about the order. Otherwise, you are, are going to make a mess, right? About the order. If you need every register to get its original value, the order, it has to be in, a put it in, the, in the reverse order. So here, AX should be XA. Okay. Again, this is because it's lost in first hour. Any question? Okay, guys. Okay. One more thing. Sometimes some people are using the stack this way. Okay. Again. Okay. This one way also to use the stack. If you have, if I have a string like this one, and I want to reverse it, reverse. You know what I'm gonna do? Some people do it this way. I'm gonna push. I'm gonna. I'm gonna push x. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I have a string like this one. I want to reverse it. So if I push h. Push, push E, push L, push L, push O. Is that okay? When I pull, I'm gonna pull it in a, in a reverse order. You got what I'm saying? So when I pull, I'm gonna pull O, L, 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 E, e H. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? So if, I, if you push an array or you are, you are gonna push a, a string like this one, when you pull it back, it's gonna be in a reverse order. Why? Because last end, there is out. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Anyway, some people use it this way. This is the most important thing, and I'm going to explain it shortly. Stacks, stacks are used also to implement the subroutines. Again, without stacks, we cannot make subroutines. Subroutines, in order, in order for the subroutines to work, in order to uh, implement them, uh, we need the use stacks. That's why stacks. That's why I'm going to, I'm going to explain it right now. So let me tell you the conclusion. And now I'm, I'm done with, with the stack. So let me tell you the conclusion before I move to functions. Okay. Guys, the conclusion, uh, I want to conclude this part to here. Look here, guys. Number one, I explained what I mean by stack. I said here, it's just a part of the memory. I'm going to reserve it for a special purpose, OK? Also, I, I told you the way you are going to read or write from the stack is going to be different from what we did before. What we did before, we call it random. Random means you can read any location. That is why you have to give me the address. Because it's random, you, you cannot just tell me load. No, I'm not, it doesn't make sense. You have to tell me which location. But in case of a stack, because we have a specific way, we have a specific way to read or write, that's why you don't need to give me address, okay? Because in case of a stack, we're gonna do it last, last data you write is actually the first data you are gonna read. So all what you have to do, tell me, just write, read. Right, read. And then again, I told you, I'm not going to say write and read again. This is not the correct term. I have to say push, pull, push, pull. Okay. Also, I told you now the memory is going to be divided, is divided among your data, your stack, and also your code. Okay. Um, 
I explained how it works. I explained also the in, uh, instructions here. Uh, I explained in order to implement this idea, I need a pointer. This pointer is a spec pointer. So we have a special register to implement the spec. We call it a spec pointer. If you are confused about the spec pointer, the idea is not very far from PC, program counter. Also, it's a pointer. And usually, I don't have any control, or usually, I don't use this pointer. It's just used by push and pull. You just initialize. Same, for, same thing for PC. PC is initialized by the food warrior. So once you initialize PC, it's the very beginning by the food warrior. So it's going to execute your program until the end. So the idea of using stack pointer is similar to PC, right? Uh, stack pointer is used to point at the top of the stack. Stack pointer is storing, is storing the address of the top of the stack. That's why if I want to write to the stack, I have to write, I have to write on top of this location. If I if I want to read, the stack pointer is going to tell me where is the top of the stack, so that I can, I'm going to read, I'm going to read from the top of the stack, or I'm going to write from the top of the stack. So why? I I need always, I need always to know where is the top of the stack because this is the point of reading or writing, right? So I I need to keep it, and it's all always automatically updated. Every time you add something to the stack, it's going to be automatically updated. Okay. Also, I explain how can we use it. Most of the time, we're going to use it this way, guys. If you have, if you have some registers, uh, and you want to use these registers, but you don't want to lose the value of this register, you are going to store the values in the stack. Then you can use the register. You will get it back from the stack. I told you this idea. We're going to use it with with subroutines all the time. So as you will see, as I'm shortly in in, in next section. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do is in any subroutine, you have to store, I'm going to store the registers and the values of the register. Then I'm going to use the register. Then I'm going to get them back from, from stack. Okay. So that, so that the values of the register before you call or after you call should be the same. I don't want any function to mess up, mess up with the main program. Okay. Or maybe function also is going to call another function. This can also happen. Okay. Most importantly, the stack is actually used to implement subroutines. As I'm gonna, as I'm gonna explain right now, okay. Uh, as I'm gonna explain right now, without stacks, we cannot make subroutines. As a, why? I'm gonna explain why. So now let's go to subroutines. Any question, guys? Any questions? Great. Now I'm gonna come to subroutines. By the way, when I say subroutine, it's the same thing like function. It's the same thing like routine. It's the same thing, I think in MATLAB, they call it a method or in Java, I think they call it a method. Just sometimes you use different names to refer to the same thing, okay? So function or uh, I, I know in C language, they call it a function. And, and here I'm gonna call it subroutine or, or routine or function. Or, I'm not gonna use the word method, but it's all, all of them are the same thing. Most of the time I'm gonna use subroutine, routine or function, okay? Anyway, so what is, uh, again, uh, the idea of using functions is not, is not only in assembly, every programming language, every programming language uh, is using uh, uh, using functions, okay? So what is the idea of function? I, as you know, for sure, uh, all of you already, you took C language and you know, uh, sometimes we need to use a certain code multiple times in your program, okay? I'm gonna give you one example, and that's exactly what we're, you will see that in chapter three, okay? So for example, guys, in chapter three, if you want to read the value from the key bed, if you want to read the value from the key bed, there's a very long code, right? There's a very long code. So for example, so so every time I want to read, I want to read a, a key stroke from the step from the key bed, should I write this long code? No, this is not a good idea. Okay, we're not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do, this long code, I'm gonna put it in a subroutine. And every time I want to read a keystroke, just I'm going to call the subroutine. So here, without it, uh, without it, is a very naive idea. Without it, without using the subroutine, every time you want to write a code, you have to. Uh, every time you want to do something, uh, you want to. Um, every time, every time you want to do this functionality here, you have to write the code here. So, for example, as I as I mentioned right now, every time I want to read the key back, I have to write the code. For sure. This is not a good idea at all for several reasons. I'm going to explain why it's not a good idea in general for any programming language. It's not a good idea for sure. The better idea, 
And that's what we are going to do with subroutines. You are going to write it only one time. So here, guys, this code and this code and this code and this code are the same, right? So instead of, but I just want to, I'm going to use it multiple times. So in my program, I want to read, I want to read the keystroke four times. So should I write the long code four times? No, that's not a good idea. I'm going to write it only one time inside the function. And every time I want to get a keystroke, I'm going to put the function, function, function is going to give me one, uh, the keystroke, okay? So here, every time you wanna, if you wanna, if, if you wanna do this, uh, if you wanna, if you wanna do this functionality, for example, here in the example I have just mentioned right now, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna read the keystroke, just to call the subroutine, the subroutine is gonna give you the key and then come back to you and so on. Okay. So why? So this is a naive idea without using subroutines. This is with with subroutines. Again, what I'm explaining here is not something only related to a simple. It's for any programming language, okay? For any programming language, and instead of repeating the code multiple times, you can just use the why the invented subroutines, okay? Same thing here in assembly. Uh, but um, why why this idea is much better than this idea? I'm gonna tell you. Maybe maybe in this course you can understand it better. Why the subroutines are more important than this one? I'm gonna tell you why. Because you know, every 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 instruction you write in your code are gonna take a space in the memory. Right, as, as I taught uh, this course in machine code. So every instruction you write is going to take more space in memory. That means this one is going to take in the memory three times the space this one will take. Because this one is going to be written in memory only in one, one time. But this one is going to is going to be written in the memory when you after you convert the code to machine, machine code is stored in memory. So this one is going to take much more space in memory. This is the bad thing about this is the bad thing about using this idea. Uh, this one is gonna are gonna take too much space in memory, but this one is gonna take only you are gonna write only one time. Okay, this number one. Number two, as you know, uh, uh, if if you do this something like that, guys, readability is gonna be too bad. Readability. So what do you mean by readability? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying here. So number one. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm gonna do in chapter three. We are gonna have a, a subroutine. I'm gonna call it T bed. Every time you wanna read something from the keyboard, just to call the function. The function is gonna get a keystroke and give it to you. That's it. So I do, and this code, this code is very long. Okay? So I don't need to keep writing. Okay. So and this way, for sure, I can I can save space in memory, less space in memory for sure, because this code is gonna be it's written only once, once, one time in the memory, and instead of writing it multiple times. Also, it's better readability for your program for sure. If your program, if using functions in your program, it's easy for me. This is for me, not for the microcontroller. This is for a human. It's easy for me to read the program and understand it, right? Because you have less code. You have less code and also this is structure. What do you mean by structure? So when I look at call key bad, so yeah, I can understand you are calling the subroutine to bad, key bad because you want to get a number. And then you are going to use the number late, uh, after that. So I can understand it easily because it doesn't have too much code. Uh, okay, one more thing also I, I have to say, uh, functions also can, uh, it's very good for reusability of code. Okay, what this means, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, if I make a function, okay, to do something, I test it, I test it as a function, and the function is working very well. So I can share or I can reuse the function in different programs. You got what I'm saying? So that's why this is also a very good idea. And that's exactly, what we are gonna do in chapter three. In chapter three, I'm gonna give you a bunch of functions, okay? I test this function, I, I make sure they are working. You can just use them. So some of these functions, something like, as I told you, we have a function called keypad, keypad. So when you call this function, this function is gonna get a keystroke, keystroke and give it to you. That's great. Also we have another function, something like put, put a string to see LCD. So this function is gonna display a message on the LCD and so on. You got what I'm saying? That's what we mean by reusability of the code. So I can, uh, I have a function to, uh, to, read, to read from the keyboard. So I can reuse it in many programs, I can share. And that's what exactly what I'm gonna do in chapter three. In chapter three, I'm gonna give you a file. This file has many functions I'm gonna share with you. You can just include it in your program and you can just use them. That's what I mean by reason. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time because this is, should be very basic, but I know some of you may not, may have like some difficulty here, but this is very basic. So in general, functions or subroutines 
are much better uh, than just repeating the code. So now the question is, now I'm gonna focus on assembly. So now how I can make a function in assembly, okay? Okay, for any function guys, for any function in assembly or in uh, or non-assembly in any programming language, any function has to do, uh, it has, there are four things you have to do uh, for a function. Number one, you have to tell me how can you call a function? How can you call a function? How can you return from a function? Once you go to the function, how can you return it back? Number three, how can you pass argument? How, you, know, you know, for some functions, you have to pass. You have to fix some values. Also some functions, sometimes you need to return some data. So these are the four main things you, I have to teach. Okay. To understand how can you make a function? So for any programming language, I have to tell you how can you call, how can you, how can you, uh, what instruction have used to to go back, and then how can you pass data? How can you return data? So, for example, here I'm telling you, for for example, guys, if I have a function here, this function, uh, I I need to know, uh, for example, here. Uh, so what's gonna happen once I once once I come here, I'm gonna go execute this function and then I'm gonna come to the instruction after call. Okay. So once I come to call, I'm gonna go execute this one and then I'm gonna come to the one after after call. Okay. So so I need to teach how can you call what instruction you have to use in order to return it back. You remember in C language we had we had the instruction return. So I are gonna have something like that here. Also, if you want to pass data, for example, this function should add two numbers. So in this case, you in this case you need you need to pass two numbers like two and seven. This function should add them and it has to return with the submission, right? So I'm gonna explain all of that. So let's 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 start. Let's explain one by one. Any questions, guys? Okay, let's start. Number one. In order to call a function, in order to call a function, we have we have two instructions. We have two instructions. The first instruction is called BSR, branch subroutine. The other one is called JSR, jump subroutine. So we have two instructions, guys. One is called BSR, branch subroutine. The other one is called jump subroutine. After that, you have to put the name of the subroutine. That's it. So if you want to call a function, very simple, very easy. All what you have, this is, again, this is different from C language. Just in, C, in case of C language, just you have to put the name of the function for a uh, uh, parenthesis after the name of the function and that's it, okay? Here, here, no, you have to use instruction to call the function. So what you have to do, you have to say PSR or GSR, jump subroutine or branch subroutine, and then you have to put the name of the function this way, okay guys? So what is the difference between these two instructions? Very simple. This one is short, PSR is short, and this one is gonna make long, long branch, long jump. Because you jump. What do you mean by short and long? I'm going to tell you what I mean. For example, here, PSR keypad. And keypad is, sto is stored somewhere in the memory here, somewhere in the memory. So the question is, how, how many bytes are from here to here? How big this jump we can make, right? If it is only 128 bytes, as I explained to before, you can just, uh, you, you, you can use PSR. Again, my advice to you, just for peace of mind, just use, JSR uh, all the time. So you can use uh, just jump the subroutine all the time. That's okay. This is a long, long, long jump. Again, what do you mean by jump? We are not do doing a jump here. No, we are doing. Because once you are here, once you are here, you are gonna, after, when, when you come to this instruction, you have to come to here. So how far, how far this function from the, uh, from this location, right? So anyway, so just, I can, I'm um, just uh, make it easy. Just all the time, guys, if you want to call a function, you can say JSR, jump, jump the subroutine, and then you can put here the name of the subroutine. Is that okay? This is how can you go to the subroutine. Go. This is how can you jump to the subroutine. Any questions? Okay. Now, I already, we already went to the subroutine, and now I want to come back. I want to return. You know what you mean by return? What do what you mean by return? Okay. What I mean by jump, look here, guys. So, I'm gonna execute an instruction, instruction. Once I come here, once I come to this instruction, this is jump subroutine. So I'm gonna go here to the subroutine. Now I, I executed the subroutine. Now I wanna return. Where you wanna return? Where? After the jump. After where you jump. Is that okay? This is how it works, right? So here, when you go, after I go, I have to return back to the, so to the to the main program. Okay, if you call the function, 
You can put the function from another function, or you can put it from the link of that. You have to return it to C. So how, how can you return? What instruction you have to use, guys? We have an instruction here, we call it RTS, return a subroutine. Very easy, very easy. And this one should be the last instruction in the subroutine. Okay, very easy. So let me, before, before I move forward, look here, guys, what I'm saying is that very easy. What I'm saying, guys, number one, if you want to call a function, very easy, just jump the subroutine, and then you put the name of the subroutine. That's it, very easy. If you want to return from a function, RET, return. That, uh, no, sorry, I'm sorry, RTS, RTS, return a subroutine, RTS. So RTS is going to return me to the, the main program or the another function, if, 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 if this function is called from another function. Wherever, wherever you called me, so I'm, RTS is, that's why for any subroutine, for any subroutine, you have to end it with RTS. You have to. As a, I remember one time, I remember one time, the TA came to me. Look, the program is not working. Everything is right. The program is not working. Okay. Now I want to, you know, the problem, usually the problem is that you may spend too much time just to know what is the problem, right? Once you know the problem, you, you take zero time to fix it. Okay. You can fix it quickly. So anyway, so everything looks okay to me. He, he called the function. For example, jump the keypad. So what I did, I put here a breaking point here, and I put a breaking point here. Okay, I found, I found the program come to here, but then the program never come to here. That means once I go to the function, I never come back. Now I found, I found at least to where where I have what is the problem? Okay, now I figured the problem. You got to hear, you got what I'm saying? So I put a breaking point here and the breaking point. Here. The program come to me, but never come to me. That means I go and doesn't come back, right? That means some, something is wrong with the function. What, what I found in the function is uh, he forgot to put RTS. And because you forgot to put RTS, what happened is that, man, this is a memory. This is a machine. It doesn't understand anything. Okay, so what's going to happen is that once you come to the function here, you have to write here an instruction called RTS so that I come back. Come back. If you forget, if you forget what's gonna happen, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the memory. <laughs> I'm, uh, this is so I'm gonna even after the subroutine, I'm gonna go through go, go through the memory. I'm gonna pick whatever is there, and if uh, if what, whatever is stored in, in the location in this location after the if it is by accident, they are a num correct number for machine code, so they are gonna execute some instruction, random instructions. You got what I'm saying? If if one machine code is not is not valid one, so you are gonna get error. You are gonna get error. You got what I'm saying? But that's what I'm telling you. What, what's gonna happen? It's gonna go to this location. I'm gonna get the machine code executed. Execute the function in the here. Function in the here. So what's gonna happen is gonna go to the next location. Whatever is there, it may be another function, it may be some random numbers, whatever is there. It's gonna take whatever is there. If if whatever is there is uh, is machine code. For an instruction, you can execute it. So some, something is wrong. That's why you have to end it with RTS. Okay. Don't forget RTS here. In order to get back, you have to write an instruction to get back using RTS. Any questions? Okay. And this is what I'm explaining here. Look here, guys. Now, our program, because we're using functions, our program should be different little bit from what we did before. What we did before, we, we only had a main function, a main, main, okay? Like, like the main function in C language, right? Same thing. Now we're gonna have main and we have, we're gonna have another uh, functions, okay? That's why I gave you your program. It's not, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be only main, main and also some functions. That's why, so that's exactly how, how, how our program will look like. I have, this one is what we call a main program, the main program. And then we have here subroutines, as you see here, guys. Every subroutine, you have to end it with RTS so that you can come back. Another important thing, look here, guys, because these are written in the memory, memory. They are written in the memory. So what's gonna happen is that if I, if, if I go this way, this way, this way, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight, straight this way. Right, because no one is gonna stop me, right? No one is gonna, you have to write an instruction to stop me. So that's why usually what you do guys here in the mean, 
usually what we do, one of two cases, either, either if, every time I come here, I'm gonna go to the repeat. So it's, it's, that's, that's what we're gonna do also. Uh, sometimes I have a code, and this code, I wanna keep repeating it, okay? As you will see something like in, in chapter three, okay? But you have to make sure it's not gonna be done by itself, okay? What, what I mean here, if, if maybe it's gonna come this way, so I have to do something to make sure uh, it's not gonna come this way, okay? Because it's not gonna do it by itself. You have to make sure. So sometimes in some programs, you guys, I'm gonna keep keep looping here. So I'm doing a certain functionality. I'm doing a certain function, and I need to keep this function all the time, okay? So this is so that by this way, I can make sure uh, it's not gonna come to here unless unless you call, okay? The other, the other one, and I think we did this one in the last lab. Sometimes we need to do, if you don't need to keep repeating, you have to do something like that in, in the very end. So once I come here, all the way here, I'm gonna keep looping here, okay? So that you are not gonna come this way. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So uh, yeah, so you should, because if you don't do this one, or if you don't do, do this one, so just it's gonna go straight this way, okay? Here, again, this is a pretty basic low level, right? So if you wanna, uh, for example, we didn't have this problem in C language because in C language we used to say mean, mean, and then you put braces. And now the C language is gonna understand this braces means this is the end. But now this is a very low, 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 low level programming language. So you have to make sure if you don't put anything here, once you finish this mean, so it's gonna continue, right? It's gonna continue this way. So you need to you need to put something here. And usually what we are gonna do. Either we're gonna loop back or I'm gonna freeze. I'm gonna freeze the program here if you already finished. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Now I already guys I explained. I explained how can you call a function and how can you return from a function? Is that right? So as I told you guys here, how can you call just we have jump subroutine? That's it. How can you return RTS? Uh, uh, RTS, return the subroutine, uh, okay? Uh, we don't have RET. RET here, I mean, I mean, you know, we need to, uh, I, I mean here, we want to write something like to return, but we don't have RET. There is no instruction called RET, it's called RTS. Okay? I know some processor using RTE, but not, not ours. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Now, I also, I want to teach, uh, okay, what is left here? What is left is you need to tell us how can you pass data and how also how can you return the data. So now I already explained how can you call a subroutine, how can you return from a subroutine. Now, what if I want to pass argument? I want to pass some data. What if I want to return the data from the subroutine? How I can do that? Okay, there are different ways to do that, but again, the very easy way, the very easy way, guys, is registers or memory location, they are like global variable in C language, like global variable. So if I wanna pass a data to a subroutine, I can simply put it in register A. Subroutine is gonna take it from register A. If a subroutine wanna return the data to the main program, subroutine is gonna put it in register B, for example. Main program can take it from register B. That's a very easy way to do it. And that's what we're gonna do. You got what I'm saying? For example, as you will see in chapter three, we have a subroutine, we'll call it keypad, keypad. So what this subroutine is gonna do guys, once uh, uh, this subroutine is gonna, once you call this subroutine, this subroutine is gonna wait until until I, uh, uh, I I hit a button here, okay, I press a button. Once I press a button, this subroutine is gonna return with, with the ASCII of the button I pressed in register B, in register B. That's how I designed it. So I designed this subroutine so that the return, the value you are going to return, it's going to be register B. So, okay. So all what you have to do, guys, just you, you call a subroutine, jump the subroutine, keep it. And then after, after this instruction, you have, you have to check register B. Okay. I, actually, I don't remember if it's B or A, but <laughs> I think it's register A. Uh, anyway, I'm going to tell you later for sure when I explain it. But I'm, I'm explaining it's an idea. You got what I'm saying? So, for example, if I have sub, if I have a subroutine, this subroutine is going to return some value in a certain register. Okay. So, for example, it's going to put it in register B. For example, so so you have to call it, and then after after you call it, now you can check register B to see what value the user input. You got what I'm saying? So, 
same thing if you want to paste something. So if I want to paste something, it's a very easy way to do it. If I want to paste something, I can put it in registers, okay? And then also subroutine can return register or memory location because they are, they are like global, okay? This is the easy way to do it. Any question, guys? So what is left in this chapter is, I have two examples here on sub, um, subroutines. I'm gonna explain these two, two examples later. Also, I didn't explain yet. So I, all, all what I explained right now, guys, I explained how can you do subroutines in assembly. All what I said here, number one, how can you call a subroutine? How can you return from a subroutine? How can you pass data in registers or memory location? How can you return the data from memory or uh, from memory or um, um, uh, registers? So what is left here? I, now I didn't explain how stack is very important. I didn't explain it yet uh, because I told you in order to call and come back, I need a stack. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you one example, okay? But you, you guys are here. In order, because this is what, what function it has to do. I have to go, execute something, and come back. In order to implement this, I need stack. That's why, that's why stack is, is very important to implement subroutines. So I'm going to explain it next time. Also, and then I'm going to start chapter three, I think, next time. Okay, guys?